Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. Moto 15 V1 has some new vertex map mesh operations included. I'm going to use them here in this scene to do two things. One, I'm going to grow our cactus here across this desert landscape. And secondly, I'm going to use a procedural RGB vertex map for some shading operations. All right, taking a look at our scene here, I've got a replicator set up, and this replicator is using the cactus as a prototype, obviously. And the point source is just the plane. So there's a cactus at every vertice on the plane. Now what I want to do is create a procedural weight map that starts in the middle and slowly grows out to the edges and has a nice smooth transition. So I'm going to use a few of the new mesh operations for that. So popping over my mop list here, I'm going to hide the replicator and I'll hide the cactus for now as well. And then going into vertice mode, I'm going to select a vertex in the middle of my plane. So right here. And with that selected, I'm going to add a set weight mesh operation. This does two things for me. It creates a New procedural weight map, we'll just call it grow, and it sets a value of 100%. So if I select the map here, I can see it in the advanced viewport. And there we go, we've got a procedural weight map on that vertice I selected. Because I had the vertice selected, it actually created a select by index selection operation automatically. If I take a look at that over here, you'll see that vertex 108 is selected and, and that's the one vertex with the weight map on it. Next, I'll add a grow weight to grow that weight out towards the edges. So I'll double click that, adds it to the top. Make sure that the map name we are operating on is the grow weight map we just created. And then I can keep my steps at zero at frame zero. So I'll just set a key there like that. Drag up to say uh, frame 100. And then if I select my steps channel and press C in item mode, I'll get the channel hall tool and I can just drag to the right to grow this out. And so after about six steps or so, I'm at the edges. And now I've got this growing V map. However, it's really harsh, right? So we go from 100% from one, v, one vertice to zero at the next. We want to really smooth that out. So there's a new mesh operation in Moto 15 V1. It's called Smooth Weight, and we're going to use Smooth Weight, double click it, add it to the scene, and we're going to use that to smooth out our V map here. So again, the grow map is the one we're working on, and once I type that in, you'll see it smoothed out quite a bit. I could up my count to say five or so. I've got a nice smooth, vmap growing across my plane here so i get a nice smooth growth effect on my cactus when i have it all hooked up so that's looking pretty good and the next thing i need to do is convert or remap this weight map into a particle size map and we can do that with the remap weight mesh operation so right here remap weight double click that add that to the top this mesh operation actually came out in moto 14 but moto 15 adds a new feature so I, again the vmap we're operating on is the grow map and we're going to target that into a particle size map. We'll call that size. So once that's set up, if I look at my VMAP list here, under particle maps, you'll see there's a size map. We're gonna use that in the replicator to adjust the size of our cactus. So if I turn the replicator back on, you'll notice that the cacti are actually shrinking over time instead of growing. So I just wanna remap that weight here. I'm just gonna flip it. I'm gonna drag 100 to zero and zero to 100. And now I should have a nice growing effect out from the center. There's my cacti growing out from the center. You can see them growing with that procedural weight map right there. So that's pretty cool, but I probably don't want my cactus in a perfect grid like this. So can I use this with a surface particle generator? And the answer is yes, you can. So I've got a surface particle generator in the scene. And what this will do is scatter particles across this plane in a more random fashion. So let's hook all this stuff up in the schematic. So popping open the schematic, you can see my replicator here with the cactus as the prototype and the plane as the particle source. I wanna drag my surface particle generator in here and my source surface or surface source, I want to be the plane. So I'll just hook that up like that. And then I'm going to plug in the output into the particle source here. And you'll see that the cactus is now scattered throughout the plane in a more natural way. And just close the mesh operations list there. But if I drag, you'll notice that we've lost our growing effect. No biggie, I just need to select my surface particle generator and over here in the channel list, I'm gonna find my size VMAP and drag that into the schematic like that. And over here on my plane, let me just pop open my mesh operations list again and drag over my set weight, drag that in like so. And over here in the channels of set weight, I've got a map name, so I'll drag that in. So that's our map name. And that's just a, you see the ABC here, that's just a string channel. And you see the ABC down here on the size VMAP, that again is just a string channel. So we know we can hook those up. So we're hooking up our map name, our grow VMAP into our size VMAP over here. And now our growing effect is working with the surface particle generator. 
In addition to procedural weight maps, Moto 15 V1 lets you create procedural RGB maps as well. So if I select my plane and double click the set RGB map, I'll add that to the top of the list. Just as before, let's give this map a name. We'll just call it RGB to keep it simple. Turns it black because our values are set to zero. So I can, you know, change these. Let's say I want to make it red. I could just change red to one, or I can do some selection operations and just limit this effect to certain vertices. But the really interesting thing happens when I look at the weighted method down here and change that to gradient mapped. Let me just open up my gradient here to be, make it a little bit bigger. Middle click at 100 to create a new key, and I'll make this key sort of a pink color and grab the zero key and make that sort of a blue color. Now you notice in the viewport it's all pink. What this mop does is it uses a fall off to blend between the two gradient keys. So I've got this radio fall off in the scene. You can see it here, it's green. And if I twirl down here to the tool pipe and say add tool pipe, and I can click my radio fall off right here that's existing in the scene. And now I'm blending between those two keys with this fall off. And I can actually move it around in real time if I want to, and you can see this blending happen. So there is a procedural RGB map happening in real time controlled by a gradient and a fall off. Now this is really useful because fall offs of course can be animated and you can create some really cool effects with it. I'm actually going to use this as a blending effect in the shader tree. So let me adjust my gradient here to be a little bit different. I'm just going to make it black and white instead of pink and blue. So I'll just up this here. We'll make the pink uh, white I suppose. Make it white and make the blue black. And so I've got this sort of blending mask there in the middle. I'm going to use that in the shader tree to blend between a couple of different groups of textures. I'm going to just deselect my RGB mask there. I can deselect my mesh operation there and collapse my mesh operations window and go over here to the shader tree. Here I've got this red sand. Let me just hide my uh, radio fall off for now and go back over here to the shader tree. I've got my red sand here and I've got another group of with this colored sand. I want to blend between those two with that procedural RGB map I just created. So if I twirl down my light sand group here, select it, and go over to Add Layer. Well, let's do a vertex map texture there at the top. The vertex map name is RGB. You can see it right there in the viewport. I'm actually going to set the effect to Group Mask, though, and that'll blend between those two different kinds of sands. So under Shader Control, Let's go with group mask, maybe coming up your screen a little bit there. So now that's set to group mask. And you can see that I'm blending between that lighter sand in the middle and the more reddish sand at the end there. And of course I can animate my fall off around if I want to, if I want to animate this effect. So super useful to have these procedural VMAP options in Moto 15 V1. And I look forward to seeing what people do with them. Yum, yum.